the cop was like, you ran a stop sign, and then, and then I should take you to jail tonight. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Vanguard. I'm Derek Hawk, and joining me is... Jim Burroughs. Uh, Tim Kratz. All right, with that done, let's uh, jump into our first video. I remember one night I was going to a party, and... Um, I was with my brother and I'm like, so my dad like told me, hey, I don't want you to leave him. I don't want you to not be. Take care of your brother. Yeah. Like any dad would do. Yeah. Um. Turns out he's my older brother. So then I was like, yo, I'm gonna go to a party real quick. And it turns out on that way to the party, I got pulled over. Yeah. So I had beer. Um, I was 17. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have three um, other people. And then, like, the cop was like, you ran a stop sign, and then, and then I should take you to jail tonight. And then I was like, I haven't drank at all. And um, I actually took a test, and um, I was clean. So, like, the crazy part was, is he still, he actually could have got me for the drunk. I mean, um, he could have got me for, like, the beer because um, I was underage, but he chose not to. So, I always thank God for that. Thank God, Jim, you're here. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I kind of wish I heard the question and what the, the preamble was to it. Because if it, the question was, why do you believe in God? And that was his answer to that question. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it really doesn't matter because it still sounds like he's saying that God turned this uh, police officer into his personal meat puppet um, yes. as opposed to having free will mm -hmm. um, to do what he wanted. Um or does he think that there, were, you know, God was simply influencing? Which again, still raises questions of, right. of free will. Correct. So, do we have free will, or don't we? Right. And did the cop have free will to act? Mm -hmm. That kind of really the question for me. Yeah. Um, to, well, what about the questions of uh, a just God versus a merciful God? Because you have somebody who is committing a crime. Um, so, is it a just God who is the game, making sure they're punished and learned a lesson, or is it a merciful God who is letting them off with the and thank God, you know, that I don't have to pay for the crime that I committed? Well, I, it, it's, I mean, justice temp without uh, without being tempered by mercy is not really justice at all. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think in this case, um, I don't know. We don't know what the entire interaction was, but the mm -hmm. cop obviously felt justified in saying, I. You know, you're just a kid. You made a mistake. Hopefully, this fixes your mistake, and yeah. you, you realize the the consequences. Um, you know, so I, in this case, I don't know that 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 really comes into play. Right. Um, I mean, justice would be the kid went to jail and got you know the full weight of the crime. Right. But that doesn't always fix the problem either, right? That could actually right. exacerbate the problem. So I don't know if that really comes into question mm -hmm. as much as the for me the as the free will yep. aspects of it, um, uh, especially because here you have an officer of the law mm -hmm. um, who does have discretion and what they can write a ticket for or not, right? Or arrest somebody for or not, right? To a, to a degree. So it's still it to me that's the most interesting question. Yep. What about you, Tim? I saw the video and uh, I, I got to tell you, I like the kid. I do. I he seemed to resonate with me. He could have been me at seventeen, yeah, uh, or eighteen, however old he is. Um, but that being said, I I kind of felt sorry for him in a, in the way that uh, he basically took, like Jim had said part of the officer's humanity, that discretion to be able to or not to write a ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kind of gave that glory to God. Yes. And that, to me, is disturbing. Because, in my estimation, it does take away part of what makes us us, what makes us human. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to the kid. I want, I want to understand his thought press, process behind giving that to God, not giving it to the officer. Yeah. I... I would have loved to see more of the clip as well, but it, it makes me wonder, had the officer written him a ticket, mm -hmm. what would he have said then? Right. Yeah. You know, and, and there are people who the, the, the officer does arrest them and throw them in jail, and then they thank God for the officer for doing that because mm -hmm. it changed their lives, right? right. Um, so at what point do you say, d does everybody in that sequence have free will? Right. 
right? right? Exactly. And that was the kind of the, what I was alluding to earlier with adjust and mercy, um, whereas you see people who have – I have people uh, – I have an uncle who, who uh, committed a brutal murder. Mm-hmm. And he believes to this day that Jesus Christ, because he committed that murder, that it, he had to go through that for Jesus Christ to save him or him to find Jesus Christ and be ready for that. I'm like, well, that's just a horrible thing to do. You know, thank God, thank God Jesus found me in prison. And that's that when you when you add that title or that preference to sentences, that's when it becomes kind of weird. Thank yeah. God. Th- I mean, it's like thank yeah. God the police pulled him over before he killed somebody. Thank God um, he didn't kill anybody. Thank God I got away with doing something that was I knew was wrong. Thank God that he gave me another chance. I mean, that's that's kind of like that's that's the epitome of indoctrination. Just right. throwing that to right. you know, it's almost yeah. like a. Um, um, in the internet, you know, the the OMG, that's really what it is to me. Right. Yeah. It, it kind of goes back to my humanity issue. So yeah, using your uncle as an example or this kid, say this kid had had a couple of beers and he ended up killing somebody mm-hmm. and went to jail and like your uncle found Jesus in jail. Thank God for saving me, Jesus. Mm-hmm. What about the person he killed? Exactly. Do, yeah, does well, that mean that you, in order to save one soul, you sacrificed another or... Well, I don't Multiple know. I, people? I don't know that Christians would see it as sacrificing another, because they think God's calling them home. Correct. So, and it, that's part of my problem with, with Christian theology is that in this particular case, the guy who died was just a pawn, mm-hmm. and so his soul just came back to God. So, no harm, no foul. Ultimately, because he was a sacrifice for this guy. Correct. Yep. And but it's still it it takes now we're taking away the humanity of the victim right. in this mm-hmm. case, right? Because he's just an instrument at that point. Again, God's meat puppet. Well, you're also, yes. you're also taking away the humanity of the person who committed the crime because that person had choices. Right. But apparently, in, in God or Jesus' divine plan, this person was required to make these choices so they could be saved. Right. right. So and you've actually, have, God has actually affected two people in, in what I see as negative ways on both ends. Yep. Yeah. And why does an omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God have to resort to such uh, horrifyingly bad yep. uh, means to achieve his ends. Or e- even if you, you get out the triple omni, which has got its own problems, and you say yep. a maximally powerful God, um, how does a, a God resort to uh, such horrifyingly bad means to achieve yep. his ends. Exactly. Why does he have to do that? So I had this discussion with that uncle uh, one time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he was no. at a family w- w- wedding, and you know how those go. Right. And he started proselytizing to me, and I said, okay, Gilbert, um, you killed somebody. You shot them in the face over a bad drug deal. Uh, you went to prison. You paid your dues. You found Jesus. Jesus, you feel that Jesus made you go through these choices mm-hmm. so that you could come to him. What about the other person? Why? What have you done in your life that is so special that Jesus would have sacrificed this other person because this other person uh, died without being redeemed? So the 25 years that you spent in prison finding Jesus and reconciling and thinking that you're going to be saved and go to heaven, this guy, according to your philosophy and your belief, is burning in hell right now. Why was he given an opportunity to find Jesus as well? Right, and so they don't they don't like having these conversations because and it goes back to penance as well. Right. Um, right. What did you do to deserve salvation? Well, the Christians love to say, "All I need to do is accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, and all my sins are washed away, and that's it." There's well, no the, there's no going back and saying, "Okay, well, I did this." To, even you know, you know, as bad as the twelve step program is, at least they have one step that goes in there and, and goes back to the people that you wronged and try to make that right. Yeah. Christian, and, uh, a lot of Christianity doesn't have that. Right. And wh- what did that guy do to, in a finite amount of time, even if that finite amount of time was, say, 100, you know, he lo- let's say he was 100 years old, just mm-hmm. um, for argument's sake. Uh, 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 what did he do for that 100 years of his life that was so bad that it would require an eternity, an infinite amount of punishment for? Mm-hmm. What finite crime done over any span of time could require a punishment that is infinite. Yep. And well, that, it, from what I remember, um, it was a bad cocaine deal. And as we know, cocaine is a hell, hell of a drug. drug. <laughs> yeah. well, right. not, but again, a, a, a cocaine deal um, going going bad, that, that's not worthy of, a, of an infinite punishment. Correct. You never get out of hell. You never stop being punished. Correct. 
And how is that just? If we go back to the just and mercy question, how is that just? And more importantly, how is that merciful? Right. Because it isn't. And so if you look at the, the, the kid's approach, you know, thank God, dot, 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 dot. Right. Thank God that I got away with this drug deal so that I could find Jesus. Thank God I wasn't the one killed so that I could find Jesus later. Thank God. And it's just, right. it's, it loses its... It's almost like a thoughts and prayer type thing. It's right. it's it's a, it's an internet meme of OMG to right. me. Pretty well, much, yeah. And, and we're assuming that he's like. he's doing the thank God as a he's assigning blame to God for for the interaction, not just a general. Oh, thank goodness I got away with that, or thank goodness, that's, right? Just that's a an general point. thank it, you. That's an interesting point. As, yeah, and and so we we do have to recognize. I think that thank God could also just be, you know, thank goodness or just a general. Phew, I made yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, as opposed to God had anything to do with this at all. Because yeah. I remember um, as a kid, I was like, oh, thank God, I, you know, I, I passed my test. Or thank God, you know, my mom right. didn't see me s- stealing candy. Or <laughs> Right, yeah, it, it's the little G God, not the yeah. big G God, not as yeah. a God provided right. this for me. Yep. And it, it goes back to my point about the, uh, the young man and what would he have done uh, had he been given a ticket. So whenever I watch a sport, I watch a lot of sports, and... Um, They'll do an interview after the game, and you'll always hear, uh, say, the wide receiver for whatever football team is your favorite. You know, I give all the glory to God, first and foremost, for helping me to catch that. The game means a lot, too. Yeah, helping me to give that game-winning touchdown pass. But you never see him say, I thank God for allowing me to fumble that football that cost my team the game. Well, the other team is doing the, the thing. The other team point, is crying. Right? Yeah, right, the other, right. the other so, team's thank, thank God that he caused that fumble. So right? apparently, uh, it, it'll happen tonight. Yep, it'll happen tonight at Texas that's LSU. A, apparently, yeah. we're going to find out if God. That's an a, interesting little point. A Longhorn you, fan or a Tigers? That's fan. That's an interesting point that you say. I remember uh, a few years back. This is probably going back ten years. There's a comedian. I can't think of the name of the comedian where he talked about that, where the, the, the athlete or the pop star, or whatever, comes out and says, "Thank God." And what they're really saying is. Thank God for making me better than everybody else. Right. Thank God right. for giving me these talents that everybody must worship. Nobody says, nobody says, thank God for making me normal. Or even, even nowadays, you don't even hear somebody say, thank God for just making me not sick. It would, it, would, right. it would hold a lot more weight for me if they would get up there and they would say, thank God for giving me the wherewithal and the will to hit the gym every day, to practice my musical instrument eight, mm-hmm. nine, ten hours a right. day. It, it goes, it, I hate to bring it back to the humanity aspect of it, but that's what it does. You, yeah. these, these people, these athletes, these musicians, Where, they work the, their tails off to get where they are, and in the end, they give it to something that they can't even demonstrate yeah. is there. Where, where's the thank you to the coach who was coaching that 13-year-old? And we all know what 13-year-olds are like. Mm-hmm who probably at some point was really seriously considering whether he'd get away with murder, given it's just a 13-year-old, right? Yeah, the average right. 13-year-old. Where's the thank you to that guy or gal or yeah. whoever, that coach, for putting up with that 13-year-old and making him into the athlete or, or the whatever? Yeah. Right? Absolutely. There's never any consideration for, for those guys. Same thing with surgeons. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank God saved my life. No, it was a, a 12-man surg- surgical team working for 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, with their with their elbow deep in your guts, yeah, who right. fixed you? Not you know. There, there's nothing in the Bible that says, "Oh, hey, here's how you uh, fix a, a an ulcer. This is how you fix appendicitis." There's nothing in there about the germ theory of disease. Correct. Yeah. Nothing in modern medicine. When I used to come out from the military, uh, pe- uh, my family knew about my atheistic beliefs and our lack of thereof, and mm-hmm. they used to taunt me by trying to make me say grace for thanksgiving and so i'm like you know what i'm going to grant your request and so i did and so i get up there and i say dear lord we paid for all this food so thanks for nothing amen yeah there you go um I've they won- never asked me to do it again <laughs> yeah. uh the next time i get asked i'm uh if i when i go back home for for thanksgiving christmas this year i want to memorize uh mark twain's war prayer hmm. um I don't, are you guys familiar with that? I know he said a lot. I know yeah, he said a lot. It, it's stuff. it's basically he you know he's thanking God for killing the enemy and making uh, widows of wives and and uh, motherless sons, fatherless or, children. Yeah, your father, yeah the, that whole nine yards, yep. all the things that go evil. Um, and the congregation where this you know and it basically it's an angel that walks in and, and yep. thanks them for all this. 
And it's like, if you're going to give thanks to God for all the good things in your life, and God is responsible for everything, then God has to be responsible for the evil in your life as well, for the bad things Absolutely. that happen to you. And we don't ever see that. We don't see, um, you know, what about the people in the Bahamas right now? Yeah. There are, there are no doubt people thanking, thanking God for sparing their lives and maybe even sparing their homes and, and their businesses and, mm -hmm. and the parts of their lives that survived that hurricane. But if it was a just, merciful God, why did the hurricane occur in the first place? Yeah. Why does evil have to happen for good to come out of it? It doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't believe that if we lived in a utopia that we would not still be human. Mm -hmm. um, I think we'd be more human if we didn't have to worry about where our next meal came from. And the statistics on, you know, welfare and societies that have safety nets and all that seem to bear that out. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't buy that at all. Um, I don't buy that utopia. Okay. All right. Well, thank God y'all were here. Oh, well. Uh, do you have anything <laughs> else you want to cover before we wrap it up? I think I'm good. No, okay. I'm good. Before we go, I want to play a little game. Oh, no. I know. And you know about my games. I like this game. Just like the Saw movies, do you want to play a game? No, not at all. <laughs> this game has helped me immensely. Many this game times. is an awesome game. So throughout history, people have turned to this holy book to answer questions in their lives. And so sometimes we have issues going on in our lives where we need answers for. So let's look to the book in a random page and see if we can, if God is speaking to us and we will find those answers. That we speak. Well, and so I'm, so I'm the, knowing you two guys, I want to go toward the back. You know, we're going to go for some revelations here. So I'm no, gonna, no, 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 no. You got to do it randomly. No, even, no, no. You picking, don't even no. know what issue we have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll get the issue. Oh, y'all have issues. <laughs> oh, I have issues. <laughs> <laughs> y'all have issues. What is your issue? Well, lately I've been mildly constipated. And uh, I sure like God's help and Bless helping. your heart. Well, thank you. Bless your heart. I need a, a large infusion of cash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I think you're going to say cats. I once, no, cats. I once, cats. I once heard Money. someone, Move a comedian, say, bless your heart is a Texan's way of, si of nicely saying fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, do it All at right, random. Don't go pick at anything. All right. Um, and then mine will be, um, I'm tired. You're tired. I'm tired. We're tired of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you much. All right, we're gonna, oh, so this is an apocrypha. Um, I don't know who Sirach is, but we're going to read from him. Sirach, uh, chapter forty-three, verse six. It is the moon that marks the changing seasons, governing the times, their everlasting signs. Ooh, you're going to be constipated, everlasting. Well, the moon could relate to my backside. Yep. What was the rest of the passage? It is the moon that marks the changing seasons, governing the times, their everlasting signs. For the moon comes, from the moon comes the signs for the festal days. It could be like fecal days. So you're going to be good. I'm going to be good. Yeah, I just yeah, have to wait for the festal. changing season. So basically what, what, well, we're what the Bible is telling here pretty quick. Right? Yeah, well, what the Bible's telling me is just it's wait September. it out and it'll and all you'll, be you'll, better. You'll be festaling before we know it. So I'm What I'm, is a I'm festal? Good. I don't know. <laughs> well, hold on. We have access to the internet here. Let's find out what a fe I want to know what a festival is because I have no idea what that means. <laughs> but I do now that I've read that passage, I feel much better about my constipation issue. So well, I'm thank, good. Bless your heart. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right, Tim. Uh, All right, of right, like or relating to a celebration or festival? Well, if you're unconstipated, I'm sure you would be celebrating. Oh. Yeah, I will be. So there are some Oktoberfests coming up. I wonder if, they're wonder if the Bible is telling me to... Uh, go to an October festival and drink beer and, and find people willing to give me money. Yeah, at night. At night, yeah, at night. currently. Well, at the change of the great. season, it is coming up to be fall. And you're tired. So. I'm tired, you know. It's, well, that, it just the moon, of the I'm just going to go to sleep. Yeah. 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 Well, some people have se uh, seasonal depression, and that may be what it's some, some form of seasonal depression maybe, and the seasons will change. Or maybe you just need to go party some. I probably do. I need to lighten up. Yeah. Yeah. You are one kind of tight. <laughs> All righty. All righty then. All right. Well, that wraps it up for another episode of Atheist Vanguard. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.